News alert now. The sex abuse scandal sweeping the competitive cheer world has now spread to Ohio. A South Carolina law firm filed another federal lawsuit alleging abuse at the hands of coaches. It's a story we've been following since the start. And we want to bring in Justin right now. To go in depth. And Tori, that's right. We're going to go more in depth now on these allegations of abuse that now come from six different states. But it all started here in Greenville County in August. This man right here, the founder and CEO of Rockstar Cheer took his own life there on August 22nd of 2022. And so he did so as he's being investigated for sexual misconduct with a minor. Now, one week later, that first lawsuit was filed naming Rockstar Cheer as the main culprit there. Again, that was mentioned there after uh, Scott Foster that took his own life. Now, by September, things escalated. The Strom Law Firm files then more lawsuits here. And you can see in September 1st of 2022, Strom Law Firm files that first federal lawsuit. And then things continue to develop here. Another lawsuit filed in Tennessee. And that continues to go. Another gym mentioned there. Three more Greenville County lawsuits were filed. Rockstar Cheer Gyms once again named in those lawsuits. And things keep continue to unfold here. Again, we're talking about six different states at this point. Here's more. That first lawsuit filed on October 27th of 2022 there in North Carolina. And they continue to unravel here at this time. Georgia Cheer Gym as well. Another lawsuit. Then we've got more as well. There's one in Florida, and this one is important to notice because this one invo involved the former coach, Eric Christensen, who is also facing criminal charges. Now, Christensen faces felony charges for three counts of lewd exhibition by a person 18 years of age, which really is a legal term for the inappropriate and intentional performance of sexual acts. Well, Christensen received a bond of $50,000 per count. That was a total of about $150,000 there. Again, the things kept continue to unravel, and that lands us at where we are today. That latest lawsuit filed in Ohio this afternoon. So we've been looking into this, especially Fox Carolina's Grace Runkle. So we want to now bring her in. And Grace, you have been looking at this very closely at this time. And this one that we've been talking about, we talked to a cheer safety advocate. You'll have more from her later. But also, she's saying this one is especially awful. It really is, and this is one where we really saw the John Doe in this case reach out for help, mm. trying to hold people accountable, but he says he did not find that help. He says he was abused by two of his coaches. He went to law enforcement, and he even went to the cheerleading authorities, but according to the lawsuit, still nothing was done to keep him or other athletes safe. This lawsuit names cheer choreographers Brandon Hale and Taji Davis. John Doe's cheer gym in Ohio hired them back in 2014. The lawsuit says the coaches began messaging him on an app at that time, and he was just 15 years old. The lawsuit then says that in 2016, Hale and Davis came back to Ohio and invited John Doe to their hotel room. Doe, now 17, was reluctant but eventually agreed, and the lawsuit says the two coaches sexually assaulted him in that hotel room. John Doe later decided to report those coaches to two cheer gyms. One didn't respond, but he says the other reached out to law enforcement. Now, this lawsuit claims authorities investigated, but said John Doe was above the legal age of consent when the assault happened, so no charges were filed. We spoke with a cheer safety advocate who says the system needs to change. We have a moral duty as well as a legal duty to protect child athletes. And so just because it's the age of consent doesn't make it right because this is someone with authority over a child athlete. And cheer officials also investigated the incident during that time. They put those coaches on a suspension list, investigated them, mm -hmm. essentially found no wrongdoing and took them off of that list. So essentially they were allowed to go back into those gyms. Right, they were on the list and then taken back off. Exactly. More of that from the cheer safety advocate is because when they were taken off that list, the lawsuit alleges that no one was notified of them being back in the system. All right, Grace, thank you so much. We'll have much more coming up at 630. A full interview with Kimberly Archer, who you just heard from, and also you can find much more. Again, we went through all those lawsuits. You can find all those details on foxcarolina.com as well as inside of our news app. Well, new details. The trial of the man accused of killing a young man in Greenville County is on hold. Tommy Lee Long, one of five suspects charged in the death of 18-year-old Uday Asuwagu Jr. Now, the teen was just weeks away from graduating high school when he was shot and killed inside the Waterside Green apartments on Woodruff Road. The police say two women went inside that apartment to get some information. Then three men came in demanding money. Uday was shot during that altercation. Now, we were not given a reason why the trial was postponed so far. No date has been set.
We're going to turn now to your forecast. We'll bring in Chief Meteorologist Kendra Kenton as far as today goes. We made mm -hmm. it through this morning. We did. Nice day. Beautiful sunset we just saw. Oh. Now we're kind of looking forward to the weekend. A lot mm -hmm. of Christmas parades. Exactly. A lot of, activities we a lot keep an of eye outdoor for. activities. Yeah. You know, Thursday, Friday look beautiful, but as luck would have it, showers will be back on Saturday and Sunday, but it's not going to be a washout. And there's encouraging news for the Greenbelt Parade because I think the rain may get out of here before oh, the parade. That would be great. Now, timing could always change, fingers but crossed. fingers right. crossed. We're yeah. optimists yes. at this we, point. We need to we'll invest in uh, Santa ponchos. That yeah. would be I like a that. winner. Mm -hmm. right. well, we got to be so ready festive. no matter what, sure. for sure. So uh, yeah. if you're going to be watching the parade, uh, just know that you may end up needing your rain gear. At least it won't be super cold. So if it is a little showery, I think we could still have a lot of fun. We'll all be out there uh, from Fox Carolina. First alert radar, all is clear now. The showers have pushed out. We got about two inches of rain this morning uh, in many areas. Now cooling down. 50s right now around Clemson, 55 degrees, 54 in Spartanburg, 40s up in western North Carolina and temperatures will continue to fall fast all thanks to a front that passed through and you can tell because that northwesterly wind carrying in that cooler air from the north blowing at 15 in Anderson and 12 in Asheville. So let's step through the next few hours. Notice we'll be down into the low 40s by 9 to 10 o'clock tonight and then it's 30s all the way. In fact, close to freezing as you start your day tomorrow. Staying clear overnight in the mountains, mostly clear with 20s ahead. So it is going to be a cold wake up at 25 in Asheville, 30 for Clemson and Spartanburg, 32 for Greenville, and right around 30 degrees in Greenwood. So a chilly night in store, a little colder than the last few nights have been. Sunny and cool Thursday, Friday would be great parade weather. Unfortunately, though, we get showers this weekend. We've got all that fun stuff. Anderson parades this Sunday, and we'll time out the rain hour by hour uh, as best we can at this point to give you an idea of uh, what we're expecting into this weekend. Of course, you'll want to download the First Alert Weather app, scan the QR code on the screen and we'll be keeping you posted on that rain timing um, as we get into this weekend. A new lighting company making its home in Greenville today. Yeah, the company called Current was created after GE acquired Hubble Lighting earlier this year. They raised their official sign today making their headquarters on Millennium Boulevard in Greenville. You see the unveiling there, exciting times. Mm -hmm. We asked the current CEO what made Greenville such an attractive place to call home. We need a talent base. Uh, which is aligned to what we do. So with the proximity of uh, the universities here, the, the standards and the upkeep of the town, also a place where employees are happy to live and bring their families up. So I think as you put everything together, Greenville was the most representative place for us to be. Yeah, the uh, lighting in that uh -huh. office, phenomenal. That. We'll continue to keep you updated on this story as we learn more. An old rundown building in Spartanburg may soon be a new home for businesses and neighbors. You might be familiar with it. It is the old Coca-Cola bottling plant on West Main Street. It's been vacant for several years. Now the plan is to turn that space into a development with some retail, restaurants, commercial business space, and then in the back, about 50 to 60 apartments. Uh, the factory sits in an area of the city between the west side and downtown. Not many other businesses are really around that area besides the famous Beacon Drive-In restaurant. Now the owner says he is looking forward to the new development and growth in that specific area. We're not, maybe not where some other areas are right this minute, but it, but it's coming. I see it coming. I'm, we're excited about that. Well, tonight at 10, we are talking with the developer about the plans and how they'll keep the Coca-Cola history alive. New here at 6 o'clock, a push asking Congress to remove the COVID vaccine mandate for military members. Governor McMaster joined 20 other Republican governors. Georgia's Brian Kemp, not one of them, is sending a letter to Congress asking them to repeal the Biden administration's vaccine requirement for service members. Well, Senator Lindsey Graham also asking Congress to do the same. He was part of a press conference with other Republican senators explaining that even though he thinks people should get vaccinated, the mandate is causing problems throughout the military. I've been vaccinated. I've had COVID. I, I'll recommend, from my point of view, you get him, you, you get vaccinated. Uh, the problem here is that we're having a dilemma we haven't had in decades, and that's finding enough people to serve in the military. Our recruiting goals are way short. The conflicts in the world are getting worse, not better. We need more people in the military, not less. And uh, this mandate is going to result in thousands, tens of thousands, of uh, able-bodied